Len, it's been exactly three weeks today since this house burst in flames from an arsonist. Soon that detection will come from up above. Lindsay, we're just finding out that the advisory has been extended. They're just waiting for this one to get on the books. You could be at the T, at the hole, or behind a tree. And that's why they say it's important to have your cell phone on you at all times on the course. Purchased by the county for 12 and a half million when the seller bought it just 18 months earlier for 3 million. And Lee County isn't through spending money on this building. It'll spend another three million on renovations. And they got through all of these piles of dirt that you see out here to my left. Over the next four to five weeks, they'll start sifting through these hundreds of piles that still remain. And once they're made, the booms will look a lot like this. You sit and wait, drive several feet, and then sit and wait again. The average American spends six months of their life waiting at red lights, but tonight, Lee County traffic engineers unveil a new plan to speed up your commute. NBC2 Sarah Hollebeck joins us live from the intersection of College Parkway and Whiskey Creek Drive, where a new traffic camera is up and running. Sarah, how does it work? Well, and typically a copper wiring underneath the street would detect your car and tell the light to turn green. But soon that detection will come from up above with a 360 degree camera that uses motion to tell the light to turn. Some would argue there's few things more frustrating than waiting through a red light. I think it's boring. A lot of times I'm daydreaming. <laughs> And what's worse, when you stop behind this white line and the copper below doesn't detect your vehicle. It takes like 20 minutes just to get by and you have to plan extra time ahead of time. It's just frustrating. Soon, these bell-shaped fisheye cameras will watch you from a bird's eye view. When a car pulls up on a certain lane and it disturbs that pixelation, it knows that there's a car there waiting and it'll turn the, the light green. Sometimes before you even pull up into an intersection. And with a 360 degree watch, one camera can detect up to eight lanes approaching the intersection, making the $14,000 device a cost saving alternative. You're talking tens of thousands of dollars. And when it fails, traffic engineers inside this roadway monitoring center step in. Can change timings from this office. So you can get off to your destination. There are already two cameras like this in Lake County. Today, commissioners voted to add another 12, and eventually there will be more than 300 of these cameras across Lee County. For now, we're live in South Lee County. Sarah Hollenbeck, NBC2. The father has dealt yet another devastating blow. Ron Coger Sr. claims his last moments with his only son were cut short. The 13-year-old was killed when his dirt bike collided with an ATV. Ron says Lee County deputies kept him from seeing his dying son. Today, he shared his frustrations with NBC2's Sarah Hollenbeck. Len, it's been two days since Ronald Coker's son died, and as time passes, Coker's blood boils. Tonight, he tells us he wants justice for the stolen seconds that he'll never get back. Just cried and cried and cried, and, it, you know, it's not going to bring him back. And, uh... I just wanted that moment, you know? I just wanted the moment with him if I could have had it. A blink, a twitch of a finger, one final I love you, one moment to say goodbye. I could have had something with my son that I'll never get. As Ronald Coger's 13-year-old son was rushed off to Lee Memorial, Coger claims instead of riding alongside in the ambulance or following it to the ER, Lee County deputies kept him at this dirt lot for 30 minutes, answering question after question, all the while his focus was on his only son. Is he alive? And, you know, I'm, I'm frantic. By the time Coger arrived to Lee Memorial, Ron Jr. was dead. The Lee County Sheriff's Office tells us it stands behind the deputy's actions in keeping Coger at the scene, saying Coger was emotionally charged and the deputies have to use their discretion to do what they deem necessary. We brought you know, Coger's story to civil attorney Marcus Viles. Viles says since Coger wasn't a witness or suspect in the accident, deputies should not have detained him. You know, it does appear that there may have been uh, um, really a, a gross breach of that arrest power because it just doesn't seem to be any compelling reason to keep that father there. At the moment, his son needed him most. You can't put into words how important that moment is. Before he's gone, before his soul's left his body, before something, it's, you can't put a price tag on it. Tonight, Coger tells us he does intend to sue the sheriff's department, not for the money, but to ensure this never again happens to another parent.
Kelly. Parents are speaking out tonight against a controversial book on the shelves of Lee County's libraries. The book is called It's Perfectly Normal, and it's meant to give children real answers about sex and their changing bodies. But these eye-opening illustrations in the book are turning heads. NBC2 Sarah Hollenbeck joins us in the studio to explain. Sarah? Len, this book right here is so controversial. It's ranked number 12 on the American Library Association's most challenged books in the country. And in 2007, it made national headlines when a woman in Maine checked out every single copy of the book in her hometown and refused to return them, calling it pornographic. But tonight, it's at every Lee County Library branch on the bottom shelf in the children's section. Jennifer McGuire's four-year-old daughter loves visiting the Cape Coral Library. Hurry, Thomas, we're running late. She'll roam every aisle, plucking out book after book. She's definitely hungry to learn, so she's quick to pick up things that might draw attention, like colorful books. Luckily, Jennifer says she hasn't picked out this one. It's not appropriate for young kids. It's perfectly normal is causing local controversy after a six-year-old picked the book up in the 12 and under children's section. Her mom requested the book be moved. But after a careful review, the library committee said it is appropriate for kids. It's written for clearly for children within the age range of the, of the Children's Services Department. Um, and, and it's a book that is so highly um, regarded by experts, by teachers, by librarians. The book is about as honest as it gets, featuring drawings we chose to censor of couples engaged in sexual intercourse, explanations of why sex feels good, illustrations of masturbation, and answers so to the point they'll make you red in the face. So those illustrations belong in the adult section? Never in a million years. You wouldn't think that that would be in the kids section. But at least one mom wishes she'd had the book when her children were young. Oh, the kids are going to ask questions. you got to give them answers. The director of Lee County's library system says it's too difficult for them to distinguish what's appropriate for youth or teens. That's the parents' job, Sheldon Kay says. And when the new edition of the book comes out next year, the libraries plan to shelve it, too. It's knowledgeable. It's open-minded. Tonight, we want to know what you think. Log on to NBC2's Facebook page and post a comment on our wall. We'll read some of your answers tonight at 11. And an audit from the clerk of court found some of those projects will likely never get underway. NBC2 Sarah Hollenbeck investigates. 104 acres for five Lee County projects at a cost of $80 million. I just can't find a reason to pay a um, hundred and some thousand dollars an acre. You can see how much we spent there. An audit released by Clerk of Court Charlie Green accuses Lee County of overpaying for property and in some cases buying land that's now unnecessary. Like this island in North Fort Myers, land once intended to expand the 50-year-old waterway estate's water plant. Three years later, the county decided to divert the wastewater elsewhere. There have been talks of turning the island into a park or marina, but according to the audit, no money has been set aside or this Wachovia building in downtown Fort Myers. Purchased by the county for $12.5 when the seller bought it just 18 months earlier for $3 million. And Lee County isn't through spending money on this building. It'll spend another $3 million on renovations before moving employees in. But Commissioner Ray Judas says the audit should have put these purchases into perspective. He says each were wise investments, some to expand roads or utilities, others to bring county departments under the same roof. The county used extreme amount of vision and foresight in recognizing that we need to stay ahead of the curve to accommodate growth and development and provide a core level of service. They can believe that but it doesn't change the price. Green hopes the results of this audit will force commissioners to vote frugal. In Lee County, Sarah Hollenbeck, NBC2. We've shown you manatee releases before, but the one this afternoon in Lee County stands out from all the rest. NBC2 Sarah Hollenbeck introduces you to a 12-year-old named Joey. His kayak cell phone in quick wits saved this sea cow's life. Joey LaMountain is the kind of kid that would make anyone want to bear children. This Cape Coral middle schooler is an avid kayaker with a heart of gold and a resume that already bears a distinguished title, rescuer. I'm the only 12 year old that probably has ever saved a manatee. On a Saturday in March, Joey was paddling along the Orange River near Lee County's Manatee Park when he noticed something odd. We saw a manatee with a crab track buoy 
on its right flipper. So this quick thinking 12 year old whose mom is a volunteer at Manatee Park immediately called FWC's emergency hotline. He snapped these photos of the manatee. I just ended up falling all the way down here. And directed rescue divers to her exact location, which was key as the sea cow was in a remote area. I basically helped save the manatee and um, tracked it with FWC and I'm proud to say that. And today the ultimate reward, the manatee, now nicknamed Tangly, is set free. Two, three. Today FWC applauded Joey's quick thinking. <sighs> Especially critical this year with a record 218 manatee deaths statewide. Sea cows continue to die every day from last January's cold snap. We picked up a dead manatee in Sanibel Island yesterday that still had lesions and other signs of cold stress. And after packing up from Tangley's release, FWC's next stop is Everglade City to pick up the corpse of another cold stunned manatee. But there's hope for the sea cows. Our little rescuer says his future occupation, marine biologist. Sarah Hollenbeck, NBC2.